All right, day two of asexual reproduction. Day two of asexual reproduction. All right, so aim. How does asexual reproduction form identical daughter cells, right? So remember, asexual reproduction, one, uh, two identical daughter cells from the parent, one parent is only involved, and they're genetically identical, okay? So the do now says, please answer T for true or F for false for each of the statements below. So let's take a look at the statements. First statement, asexual reproduction results in offspring that are identical to the previous generation, all right? That's true, right? That's what we learned yesterday. That is 100% true. They are identical to the previous generation. They always are. In asexual reproduction, two parents are involved in creating offspring. Well, in asexual reproduction, we know only one parent is involved, but it says two parents are involved. So that's false. Next one, asexual reproduction occurs only in unicellular species, it says only. That's also false. While bacteria and amoebas and paramecia are single-celled organisms and they do perform asexual reproduction, it doesn't only occur there, right? We spoke about vegetative propagation where you can cut the piece of a branch up a tree, replant it, and it'll blossom into a whole new plant, um, which we know trees are not only one cell, right? Or starfish, they're not only one cell but they also have these capabilities. So that's false. And then last but not least, asexual reproduction is a way to ensure that there is a wide variety of offspring with many different combinations of DNA. Well, is a way to ensure that there's a wide variety of offspring? Is there any variety? No variety. Because there's no genetic variation. All of them are the same, right? So this is also false, okay? So hopefully you got T, triple F. All right, so part A, genetic makeup, all right? So let's just take a look at this, right? We have the nucleus, which contains the DNA inside of a cell. Now, if we're zooming into one, uh, if we're zooming into the genetic material within the nucleus, we have a chromosome. Right, And usually you see chromosomes in these X shapes. That usually means that they're somehow replicated. All right, And this is how genetic information is stored inside of each of our cells. They're stored as these X-shaped structures. right? Um, but once you uncoil those X-shaped structures, it's usually coiled and coiled and coiled and coiled and wrapped around into strands of DNA, which are double-stranded, OK? So if we're going from largest to smallest, we have cell, the nucleus, the chromosome, to the DNA, and then to the nucleotides. If you remember from unit uh, two, biomolecules, we briefly spoke about nucleotides, right? We'll talk, talk more about it in unit seven with genetics. Just keep that in mind, all right? So this is from largest to smallest in size and structure. All right, part B, DNA reading. A gene segment is, a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for RNA and protein. A single molecule DNA has thousands of genes lined up like the cars of a train. When genes are being used, the strand of DNA is stretched out so that the information it contains can be decoded and used to direct the synthesis of proteins needed by the cell. All right. As eukaryotic cell, as a eukaryotic cell prepares to divide, a eukaryotic cell is any organism or any cell that contains a nucleus and um, organelles. Okay. Uh, the DNA and, pro and the proteins associated with the DNA coil into a structure called a chromosome, which is this X structure that we saw up here. That's a chromosome. It's coiled up DNA. Okay. Before the DNA coils up, however, 
the DNA is copied. So before it coils up, DNA is copied. The two exact copies of DNA that make up each chromosome are called chromatids, okay? In the chromatids, the DNA is very condensed, meaning that it's well packed together. The two chromatids, which become separated during cell division, are placed into each new cell. All right, so the two chromatids are placed into each new cell during cell division. This ensures that each new cell has the same genetic information as the original cell. So this is constantly happening in your body, right? This is why you're able, you're able to make new skin, if you've had like some type of cut or some type of wound, your skin grows back um, usually exactly the way it's supposed to look, right? All right, so let's answer some of these questions. All right, first question, how are genes and DNA related? Well, a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for proteins, right? So the protein that makes your eyes, that gives your eyes their color, right, um, is made from a segment of your actual DNA, right? That's why you have a very specific eye color. Your eye color doesn't just change from brown to blue, excuse me, to hazel to green. If you have brown eyes, you have brown eyes, that's it. What occurs to a DNA strand as its uh, genes are being used, right? So the DNA strand has to uncoil, uncoil and stretch out to be used, right? And we'll talk about what that being used means um, when we talk about uh, uh, when, we, when we go to unit seven with uh, uh, genetics, okay? And then number three, how are chromatids and chromosomes related, right? So chromosomes, chromosomes are replicated chromatids, okay? Let me just kind of show you what that looks like. This is a chromatid. Let me do it in a different color because there's a lot of colors here. Let me bold up that stuff. This is a chromatid, right? It contains a specific set of genes. Once it's replicated, right? There's two strands here. This is a chromosome. Right, so this is replication. And replication means making an exact copy, making an exact copy. When this chromosome is gearing up for replication, I'm sorry, when this chromosome is gearing up to be split, now we can put, we can split it into two, chromatids, okay? And one of those chromatids are gonna go in each cell, right? So this was one cell that we started out with and we made two cells, okay? Don't worry, we're gonna focus more on this. This is all gonna make sense, promise, all right? Now, number four, a train is to cars as a molecule of DNA is to what? So we know that a, uh, uh, a train is larger than the train cars that actually compose it. So that means that a, mo uh, uh, a molecule of DNA uh, is composed of genes, which is what we spoke about before. So genes would be your best bet. Genes make up DNA as do cars of a train make up um, the train. Now part D, mitosis, okay? Mitosis is a really important process, all right? Mitosis literally means creation of new cells, right? And in mitosis, 
all new cells are genetically identical to parent cell, okay? So here we have a parent cell up here. If you guys see up here, we literally have these four chromatids, right? When the DNA replicates, right? Now we have four chromosomes, which are replicated chromatids. So you really have eight chromatids, four chromosomes, all right? And then once they split again to form genetically identical daughter cells, you'll have four in each. Still eight chromatids from that replication that just happened. It's just that four of them are gonna go into the two new daughter cells, okay? So this is how we usually represent this, all right? Whenever you have a cell that has this full set of genetic information, we call that 2N or we call that diploid, a diploid cell. And we represent that as 2N, okay? This equals a full set, full set of chromosomes. Okay, so this cell, this parent cell is 2N. It has the full amount of genetic information that is enough and required to create the next generation, okay? When that DNA replicates, right, it becomes 4N. Now you have twice the amount of DNA that you normally have, right? Two times two is four, right? But when it splits again, now we have to do four divided by two because so, uh, uh, we're gonna have equal amounts in each cell. These two cells are now 2N and 2N again. We started with 2N and now we're ending with 2N, okay? Once again, we're gonna talk a lot more about this as the unit goes on. Just know that that's what mitosis means. Mitosis means a splitting of the cells into genetically identical daughter cells to the parent, right? And it's to create new body cells, which is what our cells do all the time. So that way we can grow and become the great people that we are. And this looks like something that's not supposed to be there. Don't worry about that. Uh, as usual, exit ticket. Be sure to complete that. And we will be doing uh, day three tomorrow, all right? I'll see everybody soon. Bye.